Uh, hello, uh, this is uh, English teacher Philip from England. Uh, if you have a question about learning English, uh, please feel welcome to go ahead and ask. Um, I specialize in teaching the IELTS exam and also uh, business English and grammar and so on. Right, um, so I'm just going to try to share this in uh, some groups and so on, um, and uh, if nobody is going to actually ask a question, I may go ahead and um, just start speaking about the IELTS exam, which is what I specialize in. So, well, I'll start speaking about the IELTS exam. So, the IELTS exam, uh, actually, I started teaching it uh, about 12, uh, sorry, about nearly 13 years ago, actually, online uh, in, ja in January 2007. I think, actually, probably offline about the same time. Uh, the IELTS exam is uh, one of the uh, most popular English exams in the world, probably. Um, maybe the... T the uh, uh, TOEFL exam is more popular, uh, but uh, the IELTS exam is uh, also extremely popular, probably uh, number two to that. Um, right, I'm just um, sharing this uh, in uh, some groups, um, and perhaps we may get some more uh, people trying to join. Um, anyway, so the IELTS exam is, it has four uh, sections. Um, it can be a paper or a computer exam. Uh, the computer exam is um, relatively new, maybe about coming to three years old, perhaps, or under three years old, perhaps, and so, uh, for the UK at least. Um, and um, um, so I don't know. I don't have so much experience with that, uh, with students having uh, started teaching the exam about 13 years ago. So I've mainly taught uh, uh, paper exam students. Anyway, um, so, and even now, I think, um, thinking about for England, um, it's not possible to take the computer exam in so many places uh, last I heard, but that may be, you know, changing rapidly, just depending how popular uh, it is uh, going to be. Um, anyway, uh, so the IELTS exam has uh, four sections, um, and uh, it's a reading, speaking, listening, and writing. Uh, there is no specific grammar section. Um, the grammar will be analyzed according to your English ability in the other sections. Um, so if you're uh, wondering how that's going to be tested. <clears throat> So for the uh, speaking section, uh, there are, uh, for the speaking section, it, it has three parts, um, the introduction, uh, the cue card, and also uh, the uh, follow-up uh, section as well. Um, the cue card, sorry, the, uh, the first section, uh, the uh, warm-up, will be questions such as, you know, what do you, do, um, where do you live, uh, tell me about, you know, your hometown, things like that, <clears throat> fairly, uh, fairly standard uh, uh, questions. Um, right, I'm just sharing this in some groups, uh, as you can probably see here on my screen. Um, 
Now, uh, I'll just quickly say, uh, if anyone is interested in private uh, teaching uh, by Skype or Zoom, uh, I do do that. Uh, my website is onlineenglishteacher.com. If you can just read that there, onlineenglishteacher.com. Um, and uh, I teach uh, privately by Skype and Zoom uh, for uh, IELTS exam candidates and uh, business English and, and so on. Anyway, um, so going back to the um, um, uh, go, going back uh, to the IELTS exam, uh, there are uh, four uh, uh, sessions, and we're just on the speaking exam. Um, and uh, for the uh, speaking exam, um, there are um, three parts to it. And the first one will be warm up, uh, the warm up part, so which will have fairly uh, standard uh, uh, aspects to it. Um, um, a lot of repeat questions, although, of course, there'll be many different ones because it is possible uh, in English. Um, and um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so. Um, Anyway, I'm just uh, sharing this in some groups um, now. For the uh, second, uh, so uh, for the second part, I, um, you'll kind of get a, a, a general topic, and then um, let's see. It's going to run that into Twitter. Um, so uh, for the um, uh, part two, it'll be on a general topic. Um, and um, about, uh, you know, it could be anything about food or uh, anything really. Um, I'm just going to put that there. Um, and uh, right, I was going to see actually if there are any people uh, currently, uh, okay, any people currently uh, who here no it's just me at the moment uh, answering uh, asking and answering questions so um, anyway um, <clears throat> right so yes yeah, so uh, uh, for the uh, part two uh, there will be uh, standard questions such as uh, what you know, talking about food and you know, what's your favorite food, why do you like it, when did you first have it, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, right, okay, I'm just uh, sharing this in groups and so on. If you see me clicking away, uh, that's what I'm up to there. Um, actually, it'll be interesting to see uh, if I have put that in the Facebook page, you know, I can probably close down some. Uh, um, um, <clears throat> close down some uh, pages here. Right, um, and um, it's useful to be aware for the IELTS exam uh, what the grading criteria is. Um, so um, you can actually Google that. Uh, if you Google IELTS band descriptors, then for the uh, speaking and also for the writing, uh, you will be able to get the, uh, the uh, grading criteria, how they grade it. So it's very useful to try and become familiar uh, with that um, so that uh, you can then uh, be aware of how you are going to be graded. Okay, um, and then the third section will be follow-up questions, um, and you can then uh, see, uh, 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 sorry, you'll then be uh, asked something in relation to that, presumably, uh, although maybe the uh, topic will go on a, in a different direction, tangentially, 
as it were. Um, so that's uh, useful to um, uh, be aware of how uh, potentially it might not just go spe absolutely specifically for the uh, topic. Um, anyway, um, having looked at some, you know many IELTS questions, IELTS previous uh, exam questions before, uh, it may not always um, go exactly um, uh, according to the um, 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 according to the um, uh, questions, but you know who knows that's. Just, I, I mean, I, I actually um, there's a good website. It's called IELTS Blog, and uh, they have uh, maybe thousands of questions that people have had for the IELTS exam before. Um, and uh, so that's quite useful to check it out. Um, and uh, then you can actually see uh, previous questions that people have had uh, for the IELTS exam. So do check that out. <clears throat> right. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just seeing if I've, uh, I'm shared in this, uh, my page. Uh, if anyone would like to, um, like my Facebook page also, I'll just give the link for that. It's, uh, English, uh, teacher Philip. Uh, also I have a free uh, group as well. If you would like to, uh, ask questions, you know, I, I'm able to answer questions as long as it's not a huge amount, I guess. Uh, but it's a free place to put questions, you know, whether I'll be able to answer them all, I can't always say. Um, right. Um, okay, so that, that's for the speaking. Now, for the uh, speaking exam, try not to speak too fast. Um, it may be quite... Uh, tempting as it were to try and speak quite fast and then you think well if I'm speaking fast they may think I'm good at English but uh, actually if it's if you are speaking fast uh, they may just think well you're just making lots of errors very quickly um, and so then that would not necessarily help your grades uh, if, if uh, that's what they think Okay, um, right, um, let's see here, so we're going to share this with some uh, places on uh, Instagram, uh, I've got a lot of Instagram groups as well, I don't know, it's so maybe like 20 or something, um, so I'm just going to share that here, and um, Okay, uh, so yes, yeah, so try not to sort of rush when you're speaking. As I say, it may be quite tempting to try and speak uh, very quickly, um, but um, uh, that is uh, potentially a mistake uh, because if you're just speaking very quickly, and uh, you know the examiners may be quite experienced and it's going to pick up that you are uh, just speaking, uh, you know, trying to try and sound impressive, but you're making lots of mistakes and they won't be impressed by that. Um, so also, um, one thing that's maybe quite useful is to, uh, try to, uh, think about, um, some phrases, how you are, uh, going to answer questions. Um, so, um, you could, you know, try and prepare phrases. So personally speaking, I think and that sort of uh, phrasing uh, could be useful to, I'm just going to check uh, if that's coming here, yes, great. Um, and um, so try to, uh, you know, think about uh, that, prepare that. <clears throat> now one thing for the IELTS exam, try and prepare like complete answers because uh, you, you may get 
marked down, you know, if they identify, perhaps if they identify you just done a fully prepared stock answer, as it were. Um, and uh, that would also go, you know, go for writing as well. I, I never worked as an arts examiner, but I, I've heard that certainly for writing. Um, and perhaps for speaking as well. So um, may, may well have. So try to avoid uh, preparing like a complete answer, but just, you know, think of phrases, how you're going to start the question, um, how you're going to, um, you know, some useful phrases in the middle and so on. Um, right, uh, so that's all very uh, useful there. Um, and uh, also, uh, for the speaking, um, if you don't understand the question, you know, uh, do ask because the chances of you answering it uh, correctly are uh, going to be quite unlikely. There's so many possible questions. So uh, try to um, uh, try to um, uh, think about uh, how <clears throat> how you answer how you ask uh, a question if you don't understand it. Um, so, you, for example, you may say, "Excuse me, I didn't understand the question. Could you rephrase that?" You know, anything like that. Uh, so, th as I said, think about how you are, how you would um, ask for help, assistance, if you don't understand the question, uh, because uh, then uh, you don't want to really be answering a different question than they have asked, uh, which clearly would not be very impressive. Okay. Um, right. Let's see here. Um, just, uh, the other thing for the um, uh, the other thing for the IELTS exam is um, try to. Um, Uh, uh, try to, um, uh, let me see here, <clears throat> uh, uh, try to give, um, uh, uh, try to give real examples. And uh, the reason why I say that is that if you answer a question, uh, they may uh, just, you know, if you answer uh, something which is not real they may pick up on that quite easily and uh, actually it won't really sound very impressive um so i've had students before who um would um try to answer you know just some imaginary question but i really picked it up on that very easily um and it just doesn't it's not really very impressive at all if you're going to do that, because it just sounds a little bit, you know, kind of funny sounding if you're making things which may be easily uh, picked up by the examiner. So uh, that's another thing for the uh, speaking exam. Now, um, one thing is very useful, of course, for all sections of the hours, but uh, certainly for the speaking as well. Uh, try to do lots of practice um, and, you know, practice by yourself can be useful, of course, but you also want to have uh, corrections uh, so uh, therefore um, it can be very useful uh, with the uh, English teacher uh, skilled English teacher it's certainly clearly experience with the IELTS will be helpful um, although it's not absolutely necessary I guess but it's, it's clearly for the best to do that um, and uh, then you can um, uh, yes, yeah, so try to have a, um, uh, an English teacher correcting you. So uh, not, of course, only for the English, but also maybe for the style of speaking, not just the grammar and vocabulary, uh, whatever, but actually the style of speaking and exam technique and so on. Um, and I, that's my job, actually. So if you're interested, you can email me, philip at onlineenglishteacher.com. My website is uh, onlineenglishteacher.com. And you can also uh, message me on my Facebook page, uh, English Teacher Philip. And um, I also have another Facebook page, online English teacher, um, dot com, or, or, uh, well, different spellings, not exactly that, but, uh, but in any case, you can just email me or go through my Facebook page, which I've given the link for, English teacher Philip, I don't know if I, or if I Google, uh, sorry, or Facebook search, rather, uh, English teacher Philip, uh, that will, may well 
come up, although it may just remember that I've been using that page a lot before. Uh, but here it is, yes. So uh, it may well just be the only one uh, that you will find. Uh, or it may be others. I don't know. Um, oh, here's another person. But that's not me. Um, right. Uh, so certainly for the IELTS exam, uh, try to uh, understand uh, all the different areas and the different types of questions that can be very useful uh, for the IELTS uh, so you're familiar with uh, the different types of questions that uh, you may experience in the IELTS exam. Um, now um, I did have some technical issues before uh, but hopefully this is now sharing in groups and so on. Um, okay, I'm assuming that's sharing. Looks like it's probably sharing. Okay. Um, oh, yes, it says live. I think that's working. There was maybe some technical issue before. A little bit. Uh, yes, so become familiar and also it's useful for the reading and listening sessions to uh, become familiar with the uh, different types of questions, and of course, for the writing as well. Uh, try to uh, think about uh, all um, the, uh, especially for the uh, academic, you know, there may be quite a lot of variety, but also, of course, for the general exam. Uh, for the writing section, the task twos are fairly similar from what I've heard. Uh, that's a general opinion I've, I've heard uh, that uh, the um, uh, task twos for the general and academic are fairly similar, whereas um, for the task one there will be a lot of variety, especially for our academic uh, task one, and the general uh, task one uh, will also have some variety, but certainly widely different for the, the academic uh, Task one, excuse me, uh, they can be chart, pie charts or flow charts or a map or whatever. It's just a lot of different information. Um, okay, so uh, also for the uh, speaking exam, um, um, trying to have, have some water before the exam, try to be, and a lot, a lot of just general comments you could, one could have as well. Uh, try to um, uh, try to have you know good night's sleep, get your own times, you're not rushed, uh, have, uh, don't have a very heavy meal the night before, and so on. Um, and um, try not to answer very in a very short way. Uh, potentially that may count against the grade. You know, I never worked as an arts examiner, but just thinking it's maybe being very familiar with the IELTS exam, that's kind of how the exam would work, uh, that, uh, that if you give very short answers, they may interpret that as lacking English ability or fluency or confidence or whatever. And even if it's just, you're just not, you're just giving a short answer because you, that's all you feel like doing, um, but um, that would not necessarily work uh, for the uh, exam. Um, okay. Um, just double checking, maybe that it hasn't uh, made an error. Uh, actually, I'll stand that. Um, again, there was an error notification before with some other uh, ones, um, but hopefully not uh, this time. Okay, um, right. Uh, this goes, let's see here. No, I think that was probably a fun. I edited the title, and that was fine. Some technical issue, this probably. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so lots to say about the speaking exam, and, you know, try and use complex uh, phrases, vocabulary, anything you can uh, learn that's useful. Of course, it needs to be appropriate, you know, um, and um, you're trying to use slang, for example. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, um, and um, then um, uh, for um, the uh, grammar, you know, try and use a uh, good variety of grammar as well. Um, 
and it's, I can't remember if they, exactly they say specifically don't use uh, spam. Uh, sorry, don't, don't use slang. Um, but clearly that would be risky or directly would counter against the grade. Uh, maybe a little bit informal is fine, but you wouldn't want to sound, you know, like a, a cockney or something like that. Well. Um, okay, so... Yes, they talk about inappropriate choices. I mean, anyway, so clearly, oh, excuse me, logically wouldn't be a very good uh, thing to do, a very risky thing to do. Um, right. Um, also, what I can say uh, for uh, the IELTS exam, um, uh, you know, there's a huge amount of information I can give. Um, perhaps I, I can just speak a little bit more generally about learning English. Uh, one thing is useful to do is to uh, make a goal every week, um, like say you're going to learn 50 new words, and then uh, you're going to, you know, be checking your uh, practicing and checking um, and seeing uh, how many you can remember. It can be useful to do. Um, and I was checking the time. Hello. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's good to make goals. And then, and, uh, then of course, if you have a teacher, uh, you can uh, check with your teacher, um, uh, you know, in class and practice, using it, practice writing it, trying to, the new vocabulary, trying to get a variety of, um, of uh, ways of using it. Um, okay. Um, also, in English, when you're learning English, just speaking here quite generally, um, try to use it as much as possible, you know, and in different ways, uh, useful ways, such as you know, maybe you're driving to work, you could try and listen to English online or whatever. It, you know, there's, uh, there's, for example, something called Sky News in, in, on YouTube. I'm assuming it may be available in other countries. Um, and, uh, um, so, and then, you know, you could read the news online in English rather than your native language. So uh, just try to use a good variety of uh, English. Um, and uh, try to um, uh, get a teacher is very useful, clearly. Uh, maybe you can also get some friends who have, um, uh, who are native speakers, if you can maybe do some language exchange. But, but um, uh, one thing I'll say is if you are doing language exchange with people who are also learning English, you may pick up some uh, incorrect habits, you know, so that was obviously something to be aware of um in uh, in learning english uh the other thing about learning english is that it's you know there's maybe a million words in the dictionary depending on the uh, counting method so you can't learn them all you just got to try to learn uh, the most important words um in, when you're when you're uh, using english um so um okay uh right uh so that's uh we're coming up to the end uh so yes if anyone has any questions uh i do have a free uh forum in fact where you can come and ask questions as you wish um and also uh i have an I give my email address if anyone's interested you know about anything uh, also specifically about paid classes uh, i do teach uh paid classes by skype and zoom um and I specialize in teaching the IELTS exam. So, you know, I started teaching that 13 years ago. Uh, probably I'm one of the longest uh, online IELTS teachers in the world, or even maybe the longest, I don't know. So I really started at the beginning of the online English teaching uh, business as so an industry. Um, anyway, so, um, and uh, I can maybe also get my Instagram uh, um, I. ID, uh, I have various Instagram IDs. Actually, also, uh, there'll probably be possibly a link there to um, some uh, free, I have a free one as well, free IELTS um, ID as well. But uh, actually, if I go there, I'm not quite sure if it may link to that. Um, 
no, it doesn't. But I do have, oh, yes, here it is. I have steps in OET. I'm going to probably be adding it as well. So you can come here and find out the link for that. Um, okay, so thank you very much uh, for coming across this webinar. Uh, my name is English teacher Philip from England. And please do connect if you're interested in more free webinars or you can ask questions or uh, private classes. Uh, Philip at onlineenglishteacher.com, www.onlineenglishteacher.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day.